So uh, the coronavirus is obviously um, starting to sort of pick up notice. Uh, this is something every time we have a kind of global outbreak like this, we need to think back to the global gutting of public health, which started with the Reagan administration in the 80s, but it's accelerated. World Bank and IMF austerity programs to this day uh, forced developing countries to cut and not invest in medicine. International pharmaceutical cartels don't invest uh, in responsiveness to diseases that emerge in the global economic periphery. Um, and in the United States, of course, decades of austerity have left people vulnerable. This really is another very obvious and great argument for having single-payer Medicare for all as a basic act of protecting global and national public health. Here is a hearing from yesterday with Congresswoman Jane Schakowsky from Illinois. This is on the House Budget Committee. Um, and she is going to be grilling um, Alex uh, Azar, who is of the uh, HHS, HHS. And there had been, yeah, go ahead. Health and Human Services. Health and Human Services. And uh, with regards to some comments that had been made, and she'll explain in the clip, about whether or not a corona vaccine would be affordable. We affirm, then you're saying it will for sure be affordable for anyone who needs it. I'm saying we would we would want to ensure that we work to make it affordable, but we can't control that price because we need the private sector to invest. The priority is to get uh, vaccines and therapeutics. Price controls won't get us there. Mr. Secretary. So that is extraordinary. Take that in. This is the head of the government health and human services. We talked yesterday about why having state funding and state industry that provide the most basic services. And in this case, that certainly was not like, this is John Kenneth Galbraith, who was a great progressive intellectual. He was not a socialist, okay? This is very basic stuff that anywhere out of extreme, extreme danger to everybody on the planet, capitalism, we would all agree on. And you have the, this is not the CEO of a pharmaceutical company trying to undermine important public policy through donations and propaganda but an agent of that propaganda as head of health and human services under Donald Trump. This is a tweet uh, from David Griscom, producer on The Michael Brooks Show, that is actually really important. So he's quote tweeting Michael McAuliffe, who uh, quoted that exchange. Azar, Azar who's uh, health and human services, refuses to promise a coronavirus vaccine will be affordable for anyone. We would want to ensure that we work to make it affordable, but we can't control that price because we need the private sector to invest. Price controls won't get us there. And David Griscom wrote, one day we will regard the cruel cost-benefit analysis of capitalism that results in so many deaths as part of the ma as part of the massive death tolls of this barbaric human-created system. And that's exactly right. The I mean, when we, we create the black book of capitalism, yeah. the millions and millions of present preventable deaths from AIDS, from pneumonia, from malaria, not to mention just basic deprivation of health care that leads to tens of thousands of people to die every year in the United States is going to be on the books. And of course, we all know empirically that the production of low cost and generic drugs and state funded drugs and price controls have been the only way that we've ever controlled disease outbreaks. I mean, like, we all expect a lot worse, I mean, frankly, than the coronavirus in the next 50 years, you know, worldwide sure. pressures on supply chains. Yep. And the very first test Rory's talk, talking about, some people aren't just going to be able to afford this vaccine. We're going to work to ensure that we try to get there, but some people are going to be left out. And as soon as you have a conversation, it's very, you know, it's very easy to say like, hey, well, look, you know, some health care is like a luxury, man. This is why you can't have that conversation. This is why this is why actually we do need some Aaron Bastani discourse. The most luxurious healthcare imaginable should be publicly provided for, deliverable 24/7 and free for every single human being. 
It's both an morally obvious and a absolute strategic necessity in an age of, well, I mean, these diseases are only going to climate change and ag policy. They're coming. I mean, something that's even way less melodramatic, but the proliferation of Lyme disease across the Northeast, that was not a thing. In the same way, a couple decades ago, it existed. But the warmth of the climate has proliferated this thing that actually is very dangerous if you don't treat it. Um, all right, uh, folks, Brendan. I was just going to remind everyone that Alex Azar was previously the president of Eli Lilly, a pharmaceutical manufacturer, <laughs> And That's has contributed shocking. over $100,000 to their political action committees over the years. So he actually wasn't part of like a public health group. He wasn't involved. He wasn't, a, you know, an infectious disease specialist. Nah, he was a C-suite guy. Wow. Into the opportunities about infectious diseases. And actually there aren't that many, which uh, is another, another, uh, another dynamic we're going to be dealing with. All right, folks.